If you have old fluorescent tube light fixtures and are thinking about retrofitting them with LED tubes, I'll review the options available and the pros and cons. Knowing how a LED tube light and a fluorescent tube light work is helpful. Inside of a fluorescent tube fixture, you'll find a ballast. And in some older fixtures, you'll find a starter and a ballast. Both combinations have the same end result. They just accomplish it a little differently. 120 volts AC feeds into the ballast. The output from the ballast is connected to the sockets on the fixture, and the sockets are sometimes called tombstones. When the light is turned on, the ballast sends an AC voltage spike to the ends of the tubes. After the inert gases inside of the tubes arcs, then the job of the ballast is to regulate the AC voltage to keep the lights lit. Four different types of ballasts are common, and some are wired in parallel, and some are wired in series. A LED light needs a driver. A driver is kind of like a ballast. Inside of this LED tube is a circuit board, and that circuit board is the driver for this light. On these two wires, there's 120 volts AC coming in from the house circuit. That 120 volts is wired directly to each tube. Those wires enter the end of the tube and connect to the driver. The LED driver changes the AC voltage to DC voltage and then steps it down so that it can run the LEDs located inside of the tube. The easiest way to convert to LEDs is to buy what is commonly called plug-and-play tubes. Most of them work on the T12 tubes like this one and the smaller diameter T8 tubes. It's pretty straightforward. Just remove power take out the old fluorescent tubes and install the new LED tubes. The downsides are that if the ballast fails, you'll have to replace it. The tubes may not work with your ballasts and you may not get the energy savings claimed by the manufacturer. I tested a pair of plug and play tubes with my ballasts and I saved only 14 watts per two tube fixture. I have a video of my test. I'll put a link to that test in the box below this video. If you don't test the compatibility of the tubes with your ballasts, then you really don't have any idea if it's cost effective to use them. The next choice is the ballast bypass type that have the driver located inside of the tube. That's the type I chose because my ballasts are very old and it's likely I'd have to replace them soon. These two LED tubes reduce the wattage used by this fixture by 77 watts. The disadvantage is that you'll have to rewire the fixture. The ballast gets removed. Depending upon the brand that you buy, they may apply 120 volts to the sockets on just one end of the tubes. Some brands, you'll wire the tombstones on one end of the tubes with the hot and the other end with the neutral. You'll probably have to figure out whether your tombstones are the shunted or non-shunted kind and you may have to replace them. If you're not comfortable using a multimeter to figure out what kind of tombstones you have, then this type of replacement might be best. The pins on the ends of the tubes are just plastic and there's no voltage on these tombstone sockets. You just need to remove the ballast 
and connect the pair of wires that comes out of the ends of the tubes to the hot and neutral wires of your house circuit. Another good thing about these is that if years down the road somebody doesn't know what's installed in this light and they try to put a tube into the sockets that's not compatible, uh, you won't have any bad things happen because there's no energy on these sockets. Also, if somebody tries to change the bulb hot, you can't um, get one of these pins against the frame of the light and have an electrical hazard. There are hybrid tubes. They can be used with the ballast as a plug and play. Then after the ballast fails, you can remove the ballast and wire the tubes directly to 120 volts AC. They may not play nice with your ballast and save much energy, and when the ballast fails, you'll still need to rewire the fixture. External drivers are also an option. The driver is mounted on the fixture. Some can power more than one LED tube. They are a good choice if the light must be dimmable. It's easier to keep the driver cool, so it may last longer than an internal driver. And these tend to be the most expensive choice. LED lights, just like fluorescent lights, can cause radio interference. The LED lamps don't have a 360 degree directional output like the fluorescent tubes. Make sure that your fixtures, tombstones, will mount the LED tube so that the lens part of it is facing downwards. Although some manufacturers, like this one, allows you to change the position of the tube. I was a little nervous that the LED tubes wouldn't be as bright as the T12 tubes. The two LED tubes had a total of 3,300 lumens, and the fluorescent tubes had about 5,750 lumens. The LEDs seem to be a little brighter and that's because this fluorescent tube has a full 360 degrees of light coming out of it and the light that's at the top of the tube has to bounce off the fixture and then downward. The estimated life for the LED tubes that I bought was a little more than twice the estimated life for one of my T12 tubes. One more thought I have is that if you decide that you want to replace the whole fixture, a lot of the new LED fixtures are not repairable, and so if there's a problem, you have to replace the entire fixture. If you have multiple fixtures and the replacement fixture doesn't match the old ones, you might have a problem. I hope you found this video helpful. A thumbs up is always appreciated. Click on the channel name Know How Now to find other videos. And thanks for watching.